Hi, my name's Charlotte and welcome back to my craft room. If you've been watching my previous videos for Louis Bird Community TV on the YouTube page, you'll know that I love knitting and crochet. And you may even have joined in with the recent knit along challenge that I created at the beginning of lockdown. Most of the items I make are made with these bright coloured synthetic yarns um, with acrylic polyester or maybe a, um, a combination of polyester and natural fibres such as cotton or wool. The mass produced brightly coloured yarns are lovely for most of the projects that I make such as stuffed toys but they're usually a bit cheaper and although they're good for washing and stuff like that if you're going to be making a special item I think it's sometimes nice to spend a little bit more and get a more natural yarn. When I lived in England, we lived in quite a rural county in the Clun Valley, which is a, on the border between England and Wales. And um, it was a place that had a very large market area for sheep in the past, and even has a, a breed of sheep named after it, the Clun sheep. So that's when I started getting a bit more interested in natural yarns. So I took a couple of short courses to learn how to spin my own yarn, invested in my own spinning wheel. And then when we moved to Ireland, I mean, you can imagine just how pleased I was to discover that not only were my new neighbours sheep farmers, but they are also quite highly regarded locally as sheep shearers. Most of their flock are sheep that don't necessarily produce good spinning yarn, but I have managed to get some really lovely fleeces from them and other neighbours. I'm still learning. I'm not an expert by any means, but I thought it would be interesting to show you the different processes that a fleece goes through from being on the back of the sheep right up to when you get your pair of socks knitted. Now much like many of us ladies since lockdown was relaxed slightly over the past few weeks, you may have noticed as you've driven around that the sheep have had a haircut. I have to say it's painless for the sheep, it is just like having a haircut. So I went to check out how it all happens. So it's a wet and windy day here today, but I'm really chuffed that I've been invited down to have a look at how the shearing happens. Let's go and have a look. My name is James Hopkins and I'm from Drummond and I'm 20 years old. And my name is Martin Hopkins, I'm 22 years old. I'm David Hersey, I'm from um, this Kearney. Uh, I suppose we'll do a bit of a, do a bit of shearing there during the summer. And how long have you been um, shearing? What age were you when you started shearing? Uh, I was probably 21 when I started. Uh, I must be out there nearly eight or nine years now, I suppose. We start shearing in May, and we probably don't finish till September. And I noticed you wore like um, a harness to help your back out, because it must be quite hard on your back, actually. Well. Not my back as such, the more the backs of my legs, the hamstrings and stuff, and uh, I just find I don't get, I'm not as tired. It's easy to go the next day again, like, uh, after a long day, you don't be tired. No. That would be the most thing, and I, I use it as a prevention more than, uh, so that another couple of years I'm not complaining about any problems. Um, so how many ships have you shared today, Mark? Um, I haven't counted on up the final count, but somewhere between 150 and 200, I'd say, today, yeah. So, um, how old are sheep when you first shear them? How old are sheep? Uh, this year we, we shore some lambs, so they would have been born in March, April, but usually they're the they're the, the year and year and a bit before they're shorn. Okay, and how often would you shear them? What's once the year? a year, yeah, once a year. So, what's the purpose of shearing them? What, why do you have uh, to shear them? It stops them getting maggots along their back or around their tail, and they're, as you can imagine, they won't be as warm then. They won't be as warm when they're shorn. We'll say down low. The ones on the mountain aren't too bad now, they don't get maggots as much as, as the ones down low. The, the mocks, they're a special type of shoe for shearing and they, they, they're more comfortable for the sheep when you're shearing and they, you can move better with them when you're shearing up on the timber board mm -hmm. and you can feel the sheep better, you can keep it and keep it in under the sheep and get a better feel for them when you're moving them about and uh, there's no heel on them so you're flat footed on it easier on your back than to over the day mm -hmm. so there isn't as much of a strain on you. How long does it take you to shear a sheep would you say? Eric will be anything from a minute to a minute and a half maybe. Mm -hmm. 
And he doesn't hurt the sheep. sheep at all, does Hold he? Hold on, not a bit, no. no. It has it's to just be like done. having a haircut. That's it, yeah. It's very <laughs> safe. Yeah. So you have to roll it up the right way and put it into the pack. Okay. And how many bags of food do you think you would fill? Um, you might get maybe 40 or 50 sheep in a pack. Okay. And how much does it weigh, do you know? Doesn't, the black bay sheep doesn't weigh that much, maybe, maybe a, some sheep might have a kilo and others would only have a half a kilo of wool. I mean the price is very bad, it's only 5 cents a kilo. So what would you normally do with these species? Well uh, we'd sell it to a wool merchant, who would just come around and collect it and weigh, weigh it and, and then work it out uh, how much 5 cents multiplied by the weight of the pack. And kilos, so okay. it just doesn't come to a lot. No. It's all compacted down into being just into a trailer now, which is great because um, it means they can go around from place to place and um, do shoes in different places. Admiring the handiwork. So, when I first get the, um, the fleece from the farmer, it comes in a big sack like this. As you can see, it's got lots of like probably grass and mud and all sorts of stuff on it. So the first thing to do is lay it out, which I do on a big table, and just um, run around the skirt and get rid of the main sort of bits of dirt. And then the next thing to do is wash it. So I've come up with this great invention. This is the old dog's bath, and I use it outside. Um, and fill it with really piping hot water first of all, with a little bit of detergent and then um, put the fleece in as well. And then you have to leave it and you'll see all the lanolin and everything and all the dirt coming off it. You leave it, don't agitate it at all otherwise you start felting your fleece. You have to wash it several times so it's like a day's job really. So washing the fleeces and then putting them to dry. So I invented this great um, drying system which my dad and my husband helped build so it's got netting in it so I put the, the wool in and close it shut and it helps so I'll just put it out to air on a better day than this obviously uh, but the wind helps blow through it and dry the wool. This is a lovely Jacob's fleece that I have washed and dried and as you can see it's got the most beautiful colours and very long sort of strands to it so the next thing to do is card it because um, we can't spin it just like this. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna use this, which is a drum carder. So this is how the drum carder works. You feed in your fleece, the washed fleece this end, and it um, pulls all the fibers out um, ready for spinning. So here's our fleece. And we need to pull these little tendrils out. And you just pop them all along. Then there's um, a handle here that pulls it through. You can have, you can use hand carders, which are more traditional. They're like um, two larger ones of these, and you just would use them together to card. Once you've carded your fleece. And you take it off. Now you can either take it off in a big baton like this, so it comes off in a big sheet. And look at that, the lovely colours running through it are really nice and that'll make a really nice yarn. So this is my spinning wheel. I'm just, um, at the moment I'm just spinning a little bit of this um, plain sort of white fleece. Just use your two feet on the treadle and then thread and that moves the bobbin round and it threads it, threads the yarn that you're spinning onto. There you go. As you can see, I'm not an expert at this. I'm sure there's plenty of people going, oh my goodness, what's she doing? Uh, but I've certainly advanced because when I first had a lesson on, on this, the lady knew me as the rope lady because um, what I was spinning was like rope. <laughs> it's a lot softer now than it was when it first came off the sheep. A lot of the lanolin has obviously been washed out as we saw earlier. 
Um, and again, it's the sort of activity I tend to um, sit for maybe a couple of hours or an hour at a time spinning. And you do have to get up and move around a bit, otherwise you could be, you know, it starts hurting your back if you sat in one position. But um, quite a therapeutic. So once this is full up, there's another bobbin there that's almost full as well. I'll have two or three of those and then I would thread them back onto my spinning wheel and then ply them together. Just thought I'd show you um, different types of yarn as they turn out. So this would be the, um, the Jacobs wool. Um, as you can see it makes just the natural colours in the yarn make a nice stripe. So from where it looks like that on the on the drum machine once you've spun it it turns out quite a nice colour and then this is just a plain white what I was um, just spinning before and then this one I thought I'd show you um, I didn't spin this a friend of mine spun it back in England for me but this is actually a combination of sheep's uh, fleece and our dog hair so when our dog Maisie, the Border Collie, was molting, we collected all her fur up and gave it to my friend who processed it and spun it with some ordinary sheep's yarn. So I've kept it because I've got two um, pieces like this. Really don't know what to do with it, but I just think it's a lovely thing to have. And it's a, it's a lovely colour. So as you can see, um, a little bit more work for me to do um, with my yarn spinning um, but hopefully in the future um, it will be nice to make socks, gloves, things along that line. There's lots of different things you can make with the yarn once you've spun it. At the moment I'm making some woolen socks. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this little journey from the sheep to the jumper. Thanks for watching and thanks to Lewisburg Community TV. Also many thanks to my neighbours the Hopkins who allowed me to go down and uh, film them shearing. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay well hope to see you soon. Bye for now.